painters and welcome once again to Modeling from Zero, a video series by AK Interactive. In today's video, we will be talking about filters and the bean wash. So if you want to learn a little bit about these techniques, don't go anywhere! So as we said, in this video we'll be looking into filters as well as oil paints and their uses in the modeling world. And we'll be applying them onto our Sherman, focusing on the filter and pin wash technique. When it comes to applying washes and filters, we should know that within the AK Interactive catalog we can find many different options and a wide variety of colors that will easily adapt to all our needs. Remember that these products are usually enamel-based, so we must use the specific thinners. In this case, the acrylic thinner will not work. It is important to keep in mind that oil paints are a very versatile product, so it is a good idea to always keep at least a couple of options at home. When it comes to using oil paints, here is a little trick. You can apply them directly onto a piece of cardboard so that it absorbs the oil. There are plenty of uses we can find for oil paints in the world of scale modeling, but it is true that it may take some time to learn how to work with them properly. However, once we achieve to master that skill, we will be able to replicate a multitude of existing products typically used in scale modeling. But until then, and even then, we can pick up these products that are very comfortable to use and avoid this continuous experimentation. So if you are a beginner, we recommend that you get a filter or wash directly and later on you can try to dominate the world of the oil paints. For example, what you can see right now is us creating our own filter and we will compare the parts that we'll paint with this homemade filter with the store-bought one. The first thing we must do when using filters is to shake the bottle very vigorously and after dipping our brush in the product, we remove the excess using a paper towel. So, many of you will wonder, what is a filter? Well, as you are going to see next, a filter is nothing more than a glaze that adds a bit of color variety to our model's parts and pieces. As you can see, since it's a very thin glaze, we are not changing the camouflage or the base layer, we are just altering the hue slightly. Similarly to what specific filters do in photography. The possibilities are almost endless. Just think of all the different colors you can choose from to apply a filter to your scale model. And here's another advantage. Filters can also help us smooth out the transitions between the various modulation layers. Now, after this brief theory lesson, we will apply the filter to the Sherman, which is the cornerstone of this series. In this case, the filter we'll use will be green for khaki and olive drab. And after following the procedure that we've explained previously, to remove the excess on a paper towel and simply dampen the part we're painting with the filter, you can see how the tone changes and the transition between the different coats we've applied previously becomes smoother. Although the technique appears very simple, one thing to keep an eye on is filter accumulation, as if that happens, we must try to remove any excess before it dries. This will take a bit of practice, but as soon as you finish your first vehicle, you'll find that it's a very simple technique and very effective at making your vehicle more visually attractive. As a recommendation, I would tell you to always try to use a brush that suits your needs. In this case, we are going to be working on large and broad surfaces. Remember that the scale of the Sherman is 135, so the most appropriate brush in this case will be a flat brush. 
We must also avoid using natural hairbrushes, as this type of product could damage them and significantly shorten their useful life. When applying filters, rather than short strokes, we should be using more of longer strokes. However, we do not really need to worry about passing the brush several times over the same place. The long drying time of these products makes them very workable and it will be very simple to eliminate mistakes that we may have made. So, as a summary, these are the main things to keep in mind when using filters. We must varnish our models first with a satin varnish. Wait for it to dry, shake the bottle very well, dip in the brush, remove the excess filter on a napkin or paper towel, and then apply it onto the model, removing possible accumulations, if necessary, with a clean brush. After letting the filter dry for at least a couple of hours, it will be time to varnish it again to protect this layer and be able to apply other products such as the pin wash in our case. And again, the varnish that we will use here will be the satin varnish. When it comes to the airbrush, we're using 1.8 bar pressure and 0.3 mm needle. And the deletion radio is two parts varnish to one part thinner. We wait for the varnish to dry and then our tank will be ready to move on to the next step. Before going into detail about our next technique or product, the wash, I would just like to point out that once again we are using synthetic brushes and just like with filters, this type of product also has its own specific thinner, which is the animal thinner in this case. There are several ways to apply a wash. For example, we can do it in areas with more texture, like the zimmered part, applying a general wash and then, if necessary, remove the excess using a cotton swab. This type of technique is mostly or often used in painting of miniatures for war games. Because this way we can paint the models in a basic way and with the wash we can give them more depth and have them ready for playing in very little time. The other way to apply washes is the pin wash. In this case, we will let the ink or the wash spread around the piece. And we will remove the excess or the possible failures that may have occurred with a cotton swab. You can see that the satin varnish makes it easier for the wash to run around the entire surface, staying in the cracks and it makes the wash simpler to work with. Gloss varnish would arguably not let us have the same level of control. Right now the results may look questionable, but this is mostly because of the Tourette's texture. Notice that the surface is not smooth, it's quite coarse and grainy, so this makes the wash stand out more. Not in a good way. If the surface was smooth, the wash would spread out more, but at the same time it would be easier to remove. In this case, it will be a struggle, as you'll see, but that's normal for this type of surface. This step can be actually quite enjoyable, because at this point of painting our model, we're making it more lively, more real-like, by adding shadows as an integral part of our painting process, and the model is coming to life. Just like with filters, this process is not particularly complicated, and once finished, it can be very satisfactory for us to see the results, so please try it for yourselves. There are so many wonderful products and so many options that you can pick from in the catalog of AK Interactive, so give these products a try. And what are the things to keep in mind and errors to avoid when working with washes? First of all, we must avoid excessive wash buildup as this would make the cleaning process longer. 
We must also avoid letting it dry for too long, which is the error you can see us make in this video. Remember, leaving it out to dry for a couple of days may be excessive and result in a lot of suffering to remove the excess of wash, especially on this kind of textured surface. It's best to clean the model and to remove the wash from the parts where we don't want it to be before it's completely dry. So after that explanation, let's see what it looks like on these parts that we've used earlier in the video. We've applied some thinner to these cotton swabs and we're using them to remove the excessive wash, all these lines from the brush. So that this way only the shadows remain and we can give our models more depth. The same process can be used on this piece of Simmerit. Notice the difference between the two parts after we've removed the wash from the protruding areas and left it only in the cracks. Now it's time to go back to our Sherman and apply this technique that we've just learned. You can see that on smooth surfaces it's quite easy to remove the excess of the product but the same cannot be said about the Tourette, for example. Due to the texture, the coarse surface of the Tourette, it is so much harder to remove it, especially after waiting so long to do it. So please keep this in mind, learn from our errors and try to remove the product when it's not completely dry yet, as this will make the work so much simpler. But even if we have to be a bit rougher, the previous coat of paint is protected perfectly by the varnish. So what we must do is apply some thinner and then use a paintbrush and some cotton swabs and work our way through the vehicle. If you notice any error that you or we have made, or there is a specific spot where you just couldn't remove the wash completely, no need to worry, we can fix all that with weathering. We can camouflage those mistakes by covering them with dust or oil stains or things like that. A little bit of creativity can go a long way. But that will be our little secret. We will now move on to the turret, and as I said earlier, this was the most difficult part. As you can see, the turret has a very rough texture and there are many recesses in the joints between the different domes, the vision doors, the holes for the antenna, the different hooks. We're not going to lie to you, it was quite complicated to clean it all up. But if we follow the same procedure we applied to the hull of the battle tank, the process wasn't excessively long, in perhaps half an hour we were done. So don't feel discouraged if this happens to you, okay? We are here in Modeling from Zero to learn, and the objective is also to show you that we make mistakes as well, and that it's important to use our wit to find creative solutions. Right now you can see us using an airbrush, but there's no paint or varnish inside, it's just air to remove any remains of the cotton so that the model doesn't look ugly or unrealistic because of their presence. And although you have certainly seen us struggle with the larger parts, working with the smaller parts has been a walk in the park in comparison. We were able to achieve very satisfactory results in almost no time and with very little effort. So 
So whether you are skill modelers, wargamers, or a bit of both like us, I encourage you to ignore the fear that may be holding you back from using these products and just go for it. We're certain that you'll like the results and the possibilities they offer us. There are so many products out there waiting to be discovered and many techniques to learn, so don't miss out on more Modeling from Zero videos. And after an arduous battle, our tank is now ready for the next step, but that is something that we'll see in the next video. If you like this series, and in particular if you like this video, don't forget to leave a comment as well as any suggestions or recommendations for things that we could improve. Any feedback from you is more than welcome. Well, modelers, in the last video we talked about bringing light to our scale models and today we started to look into the shadows. So if you are enjoying this series, don't miss the next episode of Modeling from Zero and don't forget to leave any question or suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for staying with us until the end and I'll see you the next time.